Hi everyone and welcome back to Curious by Nature. My name is Alan and I'm one of the entomologists here at the Nature Museum. As an entomologist, I help care for the many insects that live here at the Nature Museum and that includes the butterflies living in the Judea Stock Butterfly Haven. The Butterfly Haven is a tropical paradise brimming with butterflies. As you enter, the first thing you'll feel is the warmth of the exhibit's tropical climate on your skin. Then you'll see upwards of a thousand butterflies fluttering about everywhere with no barriers between them and you. They come to us from the tropics all over the world, from Central and South America to Southeast Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. But how do they get here? How do we take care of them? We're taking you behind the scenes today for a closer look at the special journey. Our butterflies come from many different parts of the world. So how do they all end up in Chicago? Well, it's pretty simple. They're shipped to us as chrysalises from butterfly farms in the mail. A chrysalis, or pupa, is the second life stage of a butterfly's life cycle. During this life stage, they mostly stay put, but they are alive. They can breathe, move, and some even make squeaky sounds. Every week, we receive multiple boxes of chrysalises, and a lot of care goes into processing these shipments. First, when we receive a box, we open it under a sleeve cage to check that there are no unwanted hitchhikers that came along for the ride. Then, we'll remove the chrysalises packed in soft foam and cotton and sort them into trays. As we do this, we inspect and count each one. Once they're sorted, we need to print labels. These labels let you know what species they are and where they came from. They also help us track their emergence and age. After that, the next step is to hang them up. We hang them up so that they can properly emerge and expand their wings. At one end of a chrysalis is a little stump called a cremaster. That is attached to a little pad of silk. This silk is what they use to hang to a surface when they form their chrysalis. We simply pin through the silk into a foam board to hang them up in our chrysalis cases. A simple process that we have to repeat for every single chrysalis in the shipment. Sometimes a chrysalis arrives without any silk. In this case, we'll use a low heat glue gun to attach a small piece of foam to the chrysalis's cremaster. Then we can safely pin through this foam to affix the chrysalis to the board. Once a board is full of chrysalises, we place it into the cases and wait for the butterflies to emerge. My favorite part of the haven are the chrysalis cases. They house all of our chrysalises until the adult butterflies are ready to emerge. If you stop by at the right time, you can watch butterflies emerging and expanding their wings. Any butterflies that have fully emerged, expanded their wings, and are ready to fly are transferred from the cases to the release cage. This is the cage we bring to and open inside the haven to introduce new butterflies into the exhibit. We hold special first flight butterfly releases every day the museum is open, which our visitors can watch up close and personal. Of course, our care for the butterflies doesn't end there. Even though they are small insects, they're doing some of the same things most animals do. They breathe, eat, drink, and have to go to the bathroom. That means we have to care and clean up for them every day. Let's take a closer look at what goes into taking care of our butterflies. We prepare food for the butterflies every day. The haven is filled with nectar producing flowers, which is our butterflies' primary food source, but we also provide cut fruit and nectar pads to supplement their diets. We specially prepare the fruit so our butterflies can eat it. For something soft like a banana, we simply cut it in half, but for something harder like an apple, we need to fill it with tons of little slots. This releases some of the juices of the fruit, but more importantly, it creates spaces where butterflies can fit their long curled tongues, called a proboscis, to feed. Once the butterflies in the exhibit are fed, it's time to inspect and clean the chrysalis cases. First, we inspect all the chrysalises in our cases to ensure they're healthy. Next, we remove any newly emerged butterflies and put them in the release box. Finally, we clean the boards and the cases. Believe it or not, butterflies can be quite messy. Chrysalises cannot eat or go to the bathroom. They have to hold it until they emerge as an adult butterfly. Once they emerge, they release all of their stored waste, which makes a big mess. This waste contains some excess pigments that weren't incorporated into the butterfly's wing scales during metamorphosis. Not only do they make a big mess, it's colorful and it can stain clothing. After inspecting each board and moving them aside, we spray down the case with disinfectant and wipe it out. When we're done with this, we're left with a pile of old husks and pins. We will separate them to sterilize the pins and reuse, and then the waste will be frozen and sterilized in an autoclave, which is basically a fancy pressure cooker for safe disposal. The cleaning process is performed daily to ensure the health of our butterflies. 
Thank you for joining me behind the scenes to learn a little bit more about our beautiful butterflies. If you enjoyed today's episode, give us a like and subscribe to the Nature Museum's channel so you never miss an update. Be sure to leave any questions you have for me about butterflies in the comments. And you can also click here to watch Marjorie release a kaleidoscope of butterflies into the butterfly haven. Don't forget, you can now visit the Nature Museum again in person and join us in the haven for a first flight butterfly release. Go online with an adult and head to naturemuseum.org to begin planning your next visit. That's our show for today. We hope to see you flutter into the Nature Museum soon, and we'll see you back here next time on Curious by Nature.